the National Book Report, really. <laughs> and also he's acted in sketches on the Jay Reno Show. Please help me welcome John Rudy. Shit, okay? 
I had on some Jordache jeans, a cross color shirt, a Malcolm X hat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and you know you old when you don't like any of the music in the clubs. <laughs> you know, it's all bullshit to you. And you got suggestions for the DJ? Like, yo, man, put on some color me bad, man. That shit's a like hit. <laughs> you know, you think people are new and they've been out five damn near ten years and you still can't pronounce their names right? Like, who is this damn Kanye West? <laughs> it's Rihanna. Who are these people? <laughs> and then you get, call the old guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And because you're hearing, oh, you're hearing increases. You can hear everything. You can hear you can hear everything. I'm sitting there by the bathroom, and somebody said, hey, you know, well, where's the restroom? Oh, over there next to the old guy. <laughs> so I go to the bartender, this is bullshit, let me get a drink. Bartender says, hey, old timer, can I get you a sass run? <laughs> I'm just like, damn, I just can't win. And I, I don't know what to do, because I'm at that age now, you know, they're talking about having kids, and they want, well, it's almost too late for my ass to have kids. Because I'm old, I'm cranky, I, I don't have patience. You know, I can't imagine somebody coming into my life and at two o'clock in the morning crying because they want breakfast. <laughs> That's bullshit. <laughs> breakfast is at eight o'clock in the morning. Take your little ass back to sleep. You know, how the hell is somebody that's got a soft spot in the middle of their head gonna run shit? <laughs> and then there's other things you gotta go through. You gotta teach, how do I, how do I, I'm impatient. What do you, you don't know how to tie your shoes? What, I teach you this shit? Oh, I do. Oh, didn't know that. You know, certain things you don't want to see at my age. You don't want to see a six-year-old with two missing front teeth try to eat oatmeal across from you. It's disgusting. And then the way we raise kids now is a lot different. It's a lot different. Like, see, y'all, when y'all came up, y'all had shit we didn't have when I was a kid, okay? Y'all had, like, you know, like, like stairwell protectors and socket protectors and little cabinet things to keep you off from opening up the cabinets. We didn't have that bullshit when I was coming up. See, the reason is, when I was coming up, people had a lot of kids. People had four or five kids. So, you know, if Junior took a knife and put it in a socket, you still got four kids left. Somebody gave a damn. You know, if Junior played on the stairs and fell down and broke his neck, well, guess what? The surviving kids learned not to play on the damn stairs. <laughs> we were taught differently, you know? Put things in your mouth or whatever. You know, you know how I was taught not to put shit in my mouth? My father would leave nine volt batteries laying around. <laughs> I learned real quick, real fast. And they got all this stuff now. Uh, bullying. Bullying is a big thing now. Everybody's worried about bullies and, and how are we going to solve this bullying problem? And what are we going to do about bullying? You know, you know what my grandfather told me? Well, he, he had a solution when I had a bully. It was called fighting back. <laughs> fighting back. You might get your ass beat, but guess what? That bully will find an easier target. <laughs> he will. There's always somebody else a little wimpier that ain't gonna fight back that's gonna take that shit for the rest of the school year, okay? Just fight back. You know, I mean, hell, like my grandfather said, well, you're gonna lose a tooth anyway. They're falling out anyway. You might as well save your parents a dental visit. Damn. Oh, man, I'll tell you guys something about myself now that I've tricked you into liking me so much. <laughs> um, Usually I, I talk about uh, being unemployed because I went through a long stretch of unemployment and uh, I had to get a job and uh, like most of you, I now have a day job. Uh, the difference is that I'm, I guarantee that you guys hate me, all right? Because most people, you know, most people hate their day jobs and that's cool. People hate my day job. You are now being entertained by the parking enforcement guy. <laughs> I feel. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, you get to get up in the morning and say, oh, I hate my job. I get up in the morning and say, oh, everybody hates my job. <laughs> I mean, your family member doesn't understand the shit, you know? Uh, around Easter, we all got together. My cousin Cinnamon, she decided it's a great time to announce all the family together. Yeah, Cinnamon. You know? <laughs> That's a goddamn name. <laughs> She tells the family that she's working as a stripper now. <laughs> Big surprise, but you know what my mother says? My mother says, well, you know what? It's honest work, and you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> so I figured, hell, this is a great time for me to stripper. <laughs> hey, everybody. 
I'm working for parking enforcement. <laughs> My mother looks at me and says, I always knew you was gonna grow up to be an asshole. <laughs> My cousin, we call him Gandhi. Now this is some black family the truth. His nickname is Gandhi. He's a pimp. <laughs> he looks at me and says, parking enforcement, man, that's some sadistic shit right there. <laughs> like, what? It's, it's, a, it's a tough job. It, it really is. Be like, most comics, you know, we like to crack jokes, right? You know, we always say, especially guys, they're like, oh, were you paid to be an asshole? I have to answer yes to that question. <laughs> Uh, I, I am paid to be an asshole. And, and it's wrecked my life. Dating, dating sucks now. You can't meet women on my job. Contrary to popular belief, issuing a woman a $50 citation is not an aphrodisiac. <laughs> and even if I'm lucky enough to meet a woman outside the job, oh, we date until she gets a ticket. <laughs> Then somehow it's my fault, you know? Yeah, I don't understand what happened. I mean, you know, I was only that much in the red. I'm like, well, where was the rest of your car? In a handicapped spot? <laughs> shit, I can't defend that shit, you know? But yeah, and, and it's tough, and it's tough. And they let you know when you sign up for the job that you're gonna have to be an asshole and people are gonna hate you. You really sign a disclaimer. It's like you do realize that people are gonna cuss at you. Yes, I realize you know, that people will cuss at me. You do realize and acknowledge that people will scream at you. Yes, I do. You know, people will put shit on your door handles from time to time. Yes, I acknowledge that. You do realize when you die, you're going straight to hell. Yes. <laughs> because it's an evil job. It really is. It's an evil job. I, I come across a 1989 Datsun B210. His meter's expired. That is a $58 ticket. You should never issue a ticket that's worth more than the car. <laughs> it's evil. I mean, if he had $58, he'd have a little better vehicle, like a moped or a skateboard or something to get around in. And then, you know, we gotta fight the general public. And I understand the general public hates us, okay? That's fine. I, I got, seriously, an old man attacked me once. I got choked out by an old ass, old ass man, because he was in a handicap zone. He didn't have a placard. I made sure he was ticket. He came over and was like, you motherfucker, I fought in Vietnam. And he's choking me. He's an old man and a veteran. I can't fight him back. I can't, you know, and people were cheering him on. Yeah, get him, get him. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, pre-parking enforcement John Moody was cheering him on. Yeah, whoop my ass, this is some bullshit, you know. <laughs> but I had to give him the ticket. Because the way he whooped my ass, I knew there was no way he was disabled. <laughs> <laughs> but I get that. We got to fight the public. But then we have to fight other parking enforcement officers. You know, because, oh, oh, they steal tickets from you. Yeah, they, oh yeah, oh definitely, they will patrol your area, if their area's slow, oh, they'll come in your territory and steal your tickets. <laughs> you know, because one guy stole my ticket, I said, you asshole. And he looked at me like, yeah, man, so? That's what we do, you know? I mean, it's like hanging out with a bunch of thieves and being mad when someone steals some shit from you, you know? There's no honor amongst parking enforcement agents. We're all assholes. And we're all gonna go to hell. Oh man. Dating is hard. Costs a lot of money. And times are hard. Y'all don't make it easier. <laughs> you know you don't. And I'm talking to all three of you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're all really pretty, you know, and you all expect things. You know, you have no mercy on us whatsoever. Women are expensive. They really are. You know, I try to find a woman that can work with me, you know what I'm saying? A woman that'll and, and I did, but still it's it's tough. It's tough. A, a woman did, and I don't know if it's my fault, she was like, well, you know what, John, I know times are hard, I don't even have a lot of money, so um, I'll tell you what, why don't you come over to my place, I'll cook dinner, and I'm like, wait a minute, you live in Altadena, I don't have gas to be driving out there. <laughs> <laughs> So she said, okay, I'll tell you what, have you seen Slumdog Millionaire? I'm like, actually, you know what, I have not seen that movie, you know, because I'm old and I don't see a lot of shit. I think that's a new movie. You know, can we watch Shawshank Redemption after that? <laughs> but she offers to, you know, rent, you know, uh, a Slumdog Millionaire come by. And I'm like, wait a second, that movie's two hours, right? She goes, yeah. I'm like, shit, really? You think you're running my electricity, burning my DVD player for two hours? <laughs> <laughs> 
Because <laughs> women are expensive, man, and you gotta be careful. Young guys, I'm gonna tell you something, they're evil, man. They don't care anything about, they come to your house, right? They wanna use your bathroom, they wanna turn on the light to see. They wanna flush the toilet, then wash their hands. It's water, man. <laughs> I'm single, dude. I, I can't afford it. And you know, y'all can help me out with some stuff right now. And, and I want y'all to learn. Matter of fact, wait a second. <laughs> Three single girls? <laughs> Three single guys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the dating game. <laughs> 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 That's the dating game. Man, that's right number one. <laughs> But, 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 I mean, and y'all are slow, man. Damn. Did you, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. First of all, they're drunk as hell, okay? <laughs> Did you at least send over two? <laughs> no? Damn. Do you know a glass of water or something? Well, <laughs> oh, no, no, that was supposed to be a long out of iced tea. I don't know what the hell that is. The food that's that shit. Damn, wait for this day. Gotta do something, man. Damn. Y'all just staring at me like, man, leave us the hell alone. Just get back to your show, all right? We did not come here with this bullshit. That's all right. Because all three of you add up to my age, so we can all go out. <laughs> oh, man, I, I, I'm actually going through a lot. I'm just going to skip around for a minute here. Um, I'm actually, um, because I don't want to be parking enforcement forever, um, I'm back in school. I decided to go back to college, which... Um, it's weird going at my age because it, 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 I thought it was going to be cool because I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm older, more experienced. Younger women who see me is more worldly. I've got a little more money than most of the guys their age. So I'm like, cool, I'll date these younger women. But there's something when you, when, you, when you get past 35, 36, and you meet a young woman in college, and she takes you home to meet her mother, she really wants you to meet her mother. <laughs> I had no clue, you know, I thought we were communicating, you know, I thought we were on the same page, and I get there, and her mom's all dressed up and wearing perfume, and then she wears some bummy shit, it's like, well, I hope you guys have a good time, good night, like, where are you going? Oh, I'm here to meet your mother, and, but I did have more in common with her mother, you know, because actually, um, I actually lost uh, my virginity to her grandmother, so <laughs> that's that's when you know they're just too old, man. It's just just too old for you. But yeah. Anyway, I was talking about dating. That's where I was. That's where I got sidetracked. Um. So yeah, you know, I, I'm looking for a woman that's like, you know, hey, you know what? Just just work with me a little bit, okay? Just just work. And so um, I found one. I said, okay, cool. You know, I, I found a woman that that agreed to pay for the first date. Guys, it sound like a good idea. Did it sound like a good idea? Not at all. Because you're men and you're gentlemen. You would never let a woman pay for the first date. Like I did. Because this is what happens. When you let a woman pay for the first date, the roles reverse. Alright? I mean, I started out as a man, but as the evening wore on, I began acting more and more like a little bitch. <laughs> I really did, you know? And it, it actually started immediately because she was like, well, okay, you know what? Since I'm paying for everything, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna come by and I'm gonna pick you up. And I said, well, I'm not sure if you should really know where I live. I mean, you know, it's, guys gotta be careful, you know? <laughs> but she insisted on picking me up. So I'm like, all right, cool. So she came by, now fellas, I'm not stupid. I had some of the fellas write down a license plate number. <laughs> Can you try some shit later on? Yeah, I'm smart. So we go to the popcorn stand, and she's like, well, you can even have anything you want. And usually, you know, I'm a dude, so I'm gonna get like nachos, hot dogs, soda, whatever, but I felt I need to be a little conservative and, and not let her think I was a greedy pig. So I said, oh, man, I'll just have some bonbons, no, diet bonbons, and a diet Sprite. I'm like, what the hell am I eating that shit for? <laughs> we get in the movie theater, then the lights go down, and all of a sudden, she puts her arm around my shoulder. <laughs> and starts to rub my leg. And normally, I'm thinking this is a good thing, all right? But because she paid for everything, I'm like, no, hell no. She thinks she's gonna buy me? <laughs> 
this chick is trying to deflower my ass and I cannot stand for it. So I just looked at her, I said, oh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't put your hands on me and why is my head shaking back and forth like this? I'm like, I gotta feel ovaries developing in my own area. But it's just being a bachelor, man, and, and, and guys, get, you guys are all in your 20s, right? Don't, don't, don't get out of your 20s saying man. Because you, you get like me and you get confused. I have a series of what I call bachelor questions. And um, you guys probably want to know the same thing. Ladies, if there are any ladies that can hear me, just help me answer these questions. It's just my housekeeping and just doing things around the house and just going to shit, all right? And there's just some things I've not been able to figure out on my own as a single man. Like, how long do I have to keep bread and microwave to make toast? <laughs> <laughs> How long? You know, does, does the fact that I have an inch of dust on my vacuum cleaner, does that mean I should dust more or vacuum more? <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's more attractive, ladies? What's more attractive? A man with, with a dirty belly button or dirty toenails? <laughs> but which one is more attractive? I gotta take one or the other. I ain't got time to wash both. <laughs> Y'all don't know. Y'all don't care. You're not dating anybody with dirty turdy to toenails. No. Mm -hmm. They're just picky. That's all. <laughs> they don't want to put away our discussion habits as they get a lot older. I got all these questions, you know? Questions about, you know, you know, should I bring beer to my nephew's baptism? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or maybe I should, or should I bring a nice wine? I, I don't know. Well, both? Okay, cool. I like that. And then speaking of parties, is it tacky if I bring Amway beer to a party like that? But then drink Grey Goose? <laughs> anyway, I'm John Moody. I had a good time tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, John Moody. Writer, actor, comedian, pocket fortune. Very funny, man. Good, good shit. Hey, thank you very much for hanging out tonight. We do appreciate it. Before you go, I just want to uh, bring up the producers of the show. Please help me welcome Dave Dignery.